Today we're going to talk about meningiomas. Meningiomas are benign tumors, generally speaking. They occur both in the head and in the spine. They're somewhat more common in women than in men. They are what are called extra-axial tumors. That means that although they're within the confines of the skull or the spinal canal, they don't actually invade into or in, in extend into the brain itself. They push the brain back, they compress the brain, they squash the brain, but they don't invade the brain. And um, they, generally, they generally are over the, the surface of the brain, but they can be at the base of the brain. They can be between the hemispheres of the brain. They can be between the upper portion of the brain and the lower portion of the brain, otherwise called the forebrain and the high brain. They can be anywhere where the dura mater, the outer covering of the brain, is. Generally speaking, they grow slowly. Generally speaking, they cause their symptoms by virtue of their location. So if a meningioma is located in a very vulnerable, a very sensitive area, then they will likely cause symptoms early along. On the other hand, if the meningioma is located in a relatively silent area, say the right frontal region, then they can grow to rather large size before eventually causing symptoms. And just like any other tumor, meningiomas cause their symptoms by pressure uh, with the neurological deficit. They cause them by irritation of the brain with seizures. They can cause symptoms by just the, the volume of the tumor and the swelling surrounding the tumor with increased intracranial pressure. And very, very rarely they can cause symptoms by hemorrhaging, by hemorrhaging into the tumor itself. And from that point of view, they're, they're just the same as all other tumors. The good news, though, is that because they are generally on the outsurface of the brain and because they generally grow very slowly, they are much more easy to treat than some of the more aggressive invasive tumors. Treatment for meningiomas, generally speaking, is surgical removal, if that is feasible, or if the tumor is located in a very difficult area, a very dangerous area to operate, they can often be treated with radiosurgery using the gamma knife or one of the other radiosurgical tools like the cyber knife. Very often, meningiomas are discovered incidentally. That is to say, a patient has a scan of the brain just because they had a, an auto accident or they fell off a tree or something like that happened, and lo and behold, there's the meningioma. This, of course, poses a, a therapeutic dilemma. What do you do about it? And the answer to that dilemma really depends on a number of factors. Number one is the age and the wishes of the patient. Number two is the size of the tumor. Number three is whether or not the tumor is causing any irritation of the brain, which we usually discover through um, the various scans and various electrodiagnostic tests, such as the EEG. Often, the best treatment is just to watch the tumor. This is particularly true in older people because meningiomas are known to sometimes just stop growing. They reach a certain size and then they just never get any bigger, so really they don't need any treatment at all. Other meningiomas, on the other hand, frequently grow fairly rapidly and can cause more and more symptoms and can therefore require treatment. After surgery, there is about a 10 to 50 percent chance that the tumor will recur depending on the type of meningioma and the location and the degree of success in terms of surgical removal. So that if the tumor can be removed completely surgically, then the chance of recurrence is less. If a significant amount of tumor is left behind, then the chance of recurrence is greater. There is also a special type of meningioma called a angioplastic meningioma. This is different from most meningiomas in that there is a very high rate of recurrence and different from almost all other brain tumors. These angioblastic meningiomas can spread to other areas of the body, 
most likely the lungs or the liver. So next time we'll talk in more detail about various types of locations of meningiomas and their treatment.